This week on the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. Oh, I can change my name to like Fallen Princess, which sounds a lot, maybe not a lot cooler, but at least a little bit better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, that sounds worse to me. Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a podcast focused on tactics and competitive play for Star Wars Legion. Hosted by Kyle Dornboss, Michael Barry, and David Zelenka, with Jay Shalansky, the man behind the glass. Hello and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm joined by Mike and David. How are you guys doing? Pretty solid. You know, another week and a lot of Legion to talk about. Doing pretty good. I uh, finally got my first Invader League game in and I'm happy to say it was a win, though I'm sad to uh, say how it came how it came to pass, <laughs> which we'll get into in a little bit here. But uh, yeah, man, I'm doing pretty good and I'm ready to talk some Legion with y'all. So we are indeed in the thick of Invader League. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, first, a couple of housekeeping items. We have some new products up on the on the Fifth Trooper store. Uh, some laser cut stuff. So we got some tokens, some silhouettes. If you want an acrylic laser cut silhouette, we got that. Um, a bunch of mats and sidebars. And uh, we're now doing order tokens too. So check those out. Uh, we actually sold out of those already. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're getting more, so... Don't fear. Um, they're the nice, like, ceramic ones. Uh, yeah, go check it out, thefifthtrooper.com. We also have lots of cool blog articles and stuff for you to check out. So um, with that, let's let's hit Invader League. So everyone's all cooped up on TTS playing Invader League. Uh, how are you guys doing so far in the league? I think collectively as a team, we are 6-0. Uh, so far, yeah, I think that's mm-hmm. accurate. Yeah. Um, what you played three games, I played two. Dave's played one. Yep. So six and zero, oh, man. Um, Invaders going interestingly for me. Uh, I have played two games of Danger Close Hostage Exchange. Um, where my Padme has basically started in the enemy's deployment zone. <laughs> uh. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, they've been interesting. Um, <laughs> so you're playing, you're playing a Republic, you're playing the quote unquote double secret mission list, which is Republic with Padme and R2. Yeah. Um, and you know, what I've been doing is I just like, da- so first of all, danger close is really hard to like hedge your opponent out of their entire deployment zone, unless you spread yourself out completely. And I have had the pleasure of playing against two Republic opponents which means like they're not really heavily incentivized to split their army up in order to cover the deployment zone. Right. So, um, yeah. So I've just infiltrated close to their deployment zone and then scouting partied bad man. Uh, So basically scoring her secret mission victory point before the game starts. It's been my first action on several, on on at least one of the games, (laughs) like free action. I have a victory point now. <laughs> yeah, so word to the wise. A, don't play Danger Close against Padme. Um, but B, yeah, don't forget that she can infiltrate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that generally there's not a ton you can do about it in that specific situation. Um, like, she's probably going to score it anyways. Like, even if she doesn't get to infiltrate and do that, like, Danger Close is very easy to you know, be able to walk over to your pl- opponent's deployment zone. Like, getting R2 into the zone on turn, like, three is not out of the question. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a big, long zone that is basically the entire board edge on one side. And you're only, you know, like, range... What is it, range three from your opponent's zone? So... Yeah. Um so, I mean, basically, Secret Mission has won me both of my games, whether it's been for one or for two. Um, you know, I'm just sitting back as blue player and like, all right, I'm on four victory points. Come to Papa. Here's my Overwatch. That doesn't sound very fun, not going to lie. Look, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so David, how are your games going, man? Uh- 
<laughs> well, I've played one exactly one game, and it's been a disarray bombing run, and I'm playing twelve activation Tauntaun, so I'm just like full degeneracy over here, <laughs> and just um. <laughs> Hey, high five. <laughs> high five. <laughs> from, uh, from Clone Overwatch spam to 12 act tauntauns. Oh, man. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So it's sort of, it's one of those things where it's like, man, I just want to win. And so I'm going to play this list. Um, that's kind of how it feels a lot of times when I'm playing triple tauntauns. I, I generally just dislike it. And it just, um, it just got to a point where it's like, I, I don't want to make, you know, playing Luke and Sabine is, is actually kind of stressful by comparison because you're trying to manage two like fat heroes and if one of them dies you're in you're in hot water right away because you're maybe losing a command card or two if you have bad timing and tauntauns don't really respect that they just kind of exist and as long as you know you have your officer alive behind a rock you know as rebels are want to do you're probably not going to be that much in trouble and sabine is really good at just sitting around uh, holding a flank um and so, like, the, the big thing for Tauntauns, right, they've got two, like, really strong um, uh, cards now in Bombing Run and Disarray. And they've also benefited from some of the new deployments, like like Hemmed In is also really good. Because, uh, of course, you know, just like Disarray, if your opponent splits their army across deployment zones, then you just pick the, whatever the weaker one is and you go crush it with your Tauntauns. And they're relatively independent actors. Um you don't have to really worry about it, especially if you have uplinks on two of them, which is how my list goes. I have like two uplinks and one without, because usually I can get like you know ambush on one and then uplinks on the other two, and you're just you're just good to go at the one pip level. Um, obviously, it's not invincible. Um, my win on my win last week was almost 100% turn zero. Um, the cards just fell out to where. All my choices for my opponent who was playing Dooku with three BX droid snipers, they were just all bad for him. And I got I got really lucky. So like in the last slot came up breakthrough disarray limited viz. <laughs> like those are some like really good cards for me. But then like on the way there, it's like, oh, bombing run. Oh, uh minefield. Oh, um, you know, battle lines which you know is better for Dooku because he can concentrate his forces. But it was one of the situations where it was like, well, I'm going to cancel Danger Close, and then if my opponent wants to not play Bombing Run, he'll have to cancel something else. And so it just became a situation where where my opponent was just like, I don't, I have to make like uh, the, less, the less bad choice. There were two bad choices in front of my opponent. I had to try to make the less bad one. And it turned out that, that Breakthrough was the better choice. Um, in, hi- in, hindsight. in hindsight yeah but it was completely in hindsight mm-hmm. i mean his plan was a good one his plan was say okay well i'm just going to use my bx droids to kill r2d2 and i don't think either of us expected the tauntauns to just smash the bx's because these bx's are strike teams but they have shields so these are like four these are like four health bx strike teams that are taking dodges and the tons are still just burning through them because tons are so consistent with their firepower yep i mean and so that Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say to your point about your objective tech, um, I found that this is, like, lately, this is a lot less luck, and, like, this is just what objective decks are now. A little you know? bit, yeah. And, like, you have to be able to bid, you know? It's it's not... I mean, as, as nice as it is to be red and to have, like, a flexible all-rounder list, there really are some lists now that are just, like, well, if I don't have a bid, this game is you know, my opponents to, to lose, you know, and like, it's just really strong when a, a Tauntaun player can, can get these objectives out there. And it's like, well, these are all pretty good for me and all your choices are bad. And then you're just like, well, what, what am I going to do if I don't have a 11 point bid accessible to me? And I mean, like my opponent even said so during the match, he's like, well, you know, this would be a completely different game if I had just taken a five point upgrade instead of a 10 point upgrade on this character then it would have been totally different. Like his battle deck would have been completely slanted the other way. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, full disclosure, I'm playing droids and my deployments are, (laughs) do not include disarray or battle lines or, um, or danger close. Yeah. So, you know, and that's essentially like, at least in my case, I'm bidding specifically for the deployments 
Um, not that I could care less about the objectives, but I don't care as much about the objectives as I do about the deployments. Uh, and I think like prior to vital assets, you know, quote unquote bidding for deployments was not really a thing. Um, I think now between secret mission and, you know, some of the skew lists like Tauntauns, um, I think it, it should be. Yeah. I mean, I'm basically doing what you're doing, but reverse, <laughs> like I, my battle deck, I'm bidding for deployments as well. And it's just battle lines, disarray, danger close. Uh, what's the other one? Advanced positions, you know, just like all the degenerate, you know, get into your deployment zones as fast as possible. Yeah. Right. There's, there's some common ground there, right? You know, we're trying to do the same thing, which is sort of like, um, it's an, it's an alternate win condition deck essentially. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, like, my my list basically is like, okay, well, I'm going to score two victory points off my secret mission characters. Like, and a lot of objectives, like, I don't even have to compete on the regular objectives. Like, hostage exchange, like, my hostage could die. And as blue player, like, I could still win that game. Yeah. <laughs> and key positions similarly, right? You could actually win the game without even holding your home objective, potentially. Yeah. You're essentially like playing a different game. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Um, yeah. Um, well, I, uh, so I've had, I'm three games in. They've all been super close. Um, and uh, pulled, them, pulled them out by the skin of my teeth. Um, I still have both Republic players left. So I'm uh, not looking forward to That would be Jace. Uh, Pippin, who I think uh, played you in the Gen Con finals, David. He did. Yeah, he was playing Empire back then, of course. But yeah, and um, very and, good player. Uh, and Nima. So uh, yeah, those are both going to be super tough, and it's already been three super tough matches. So um, I <laughs> I wild carded on a bit of a lark before my third game from Dooku to Grievous, um, just because the last three maps have a lot of difficult terrain and elevation changes and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, we'll see. I told uh, him not to do it. Just to be clear, uh, yeah, you were man. I uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> short short version. Uh, Grievous died in melee to Aiden in my last game. <laughs> um, it's funny how so, uh, you get used to cunning. I basically put him in a position where like I needed to win priority on a one pip, but of course he can't do that automatically. So <laughs> so he plays um, uh, you know Aiden's one pip, and I play Grievous's one pip. And he's like, all right, let's roll off. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, there's a lot to be said for like playing a lot of games with a character with cunning and then going back to not. Like being able to just like know you're going first is huge. Oh, yeah. Well, and it was like, I realized as soon as I put him in that position, I was like, I immediately regret this decision because I knew that was going to happen. And of course, he run the wall, run the wall, roll off and then killed Grievous. Um, and ultimately, it was like this crazy situation where, you know, you're trying to, like, I had one more victory point on VAPS, and he's trying to tag the VAPS with a bunch of units at the end of the turn, and you're trying to, like, suppress everything. It was crazy. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, Grievous, Grievous got murdered by Aiden. <laughs> you know what? Next time, I'm going to just hate Dooku, and I'm play as one pip and be like, yeah, you don't, you don't have to roll. It's all right. I got this. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. So anyway, I'm stuck with Grievous for two more games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying he's bad. He's um, this is like an age old separatist identity crisis debate, right? Because Dooku has cunning, which is obviously good. He has force powers, also good. Um, but he's slower than Grievous. You know, he doesn't have scale. Um, he doesn't ever level. Yeah, natively, which is huge. Um, he's got lower health. You know, eight versus six. Um. And he's 30 more points. So, you know, is Cunning and his command cards and force powers, you know, worth 30 points? Like, respecting the fact that Grievous is also significantly faster. Um, and I, I don't I don't actually know the answer to that question, but I know, like, my personal preference. Um, I don't like dice rolls. I'd rather just not roll dice. <laughs> so, if I can play a card and just know that I'm going to win priority, that's, that's what I want to do. So... Um, I'm probably going back to Dooku. You, uh, you, you say that. You say that. Yet, I think three out of three of us all think that Dooku is the better pick. Uh, you know, in a vacuum. I think. Yeah, but I think that comes down a little bit to play style too. You know, Dooku is defensive. Um, yeah, yeah. He's he's much better when you can make targets come to him, 
whereas Grievous is offensive, right? He may, he forces situations, he makes mm-hmm. things happen by getting in there. So, um, I think that's more a play style thing than any, anything else. I know there are lots of people that are in camp. Like obviously, Grievous is better, and if they were the same cost, I'd still take Grievous. So, and I respect that opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. Me, me too. Wait, 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 wait. If they were the same cost, you'd still take Grievous. Uh, okay, I've heard people I'm say just that. Gonna say that's crazy, and <laughs> we're gonna move on. Okay. <laughs> well, well, no, it's a, it's a play style thing. You're right. Yeah, it's You're totally right. a play style thing. And like Dooku, Dooku opened up as a solo commander when BX droids came out, because yep. like trying to run him, with, we're trying to run him, and then like Dekas was a little bit of a non-starter because you were low on activation. So like, well, I don't just say Grievous. Grievous is just better, and they work together better. But you know, I think now that you got BX droids, Dooku's coming to his own, and he he runs like I, I literally remember thinking when I looked at some of these Dooku lists, I'm like, man, this reminds me of a list I used to play, the Z6 gun line with Luke yeah. at the head. It's the, it's almost the same, except this gun line doesn't give a, a heck about suppression, which is you know the awesome part. And of course, Dooku's just amazing all on his own. And like you say, cunning is a hell of a drug. It's really addicting, and, and you get used to it because it's just so like you know it's just so strong. And it's like I don't have to worry about rolling off. It's just it's just a great a great card. I'm singing the praises of Dooku because I wish that I could do the things that he does as a rebel. But alas. I don't know. No I, think, I, think Luke is, I think Luke is still way better than Dooku, but that's, a, mean, debate. Just, that's a debate for another time. I know. I just, can't, I just can't agree. <laughs> but, I, but I do think that the Dooku gun line is, as a whole, significantly better than the Luke gun line. Yeah, like as an archetype, I think Dooku is definitely like in the top, the top two of gun lines that are possible. Gar, of course, probably t- the range three gun lines, right? I think Gar and CIS have that have those spots pretty much locked up in terms of effectiveness. Yeah, just crazy. Well, I mean, Empire can do a better range four, but certainly, certainly. Um, anyway, let's. Uh, so we've got some more stuff to talk about. We have some. So first, we have some quick stats, some unit counts, and stuff from Bush Facts uh, about Invader League, and then we also have. And I can't believe we didn't preview this at the beginning. We have an interview with Cinderella Tim Hannon from Stabcast. Uh, which is going to form the bulk of this episode. So let's real quickly hit some stats so that we can move on to Tim. Um, these are courtesy of Bushman Bush Facts uh, of the Critical X podcast, occasionally recorded. Um, and we'll have <laughs> we'll have John on at some point to talk more detailed stats. These are just some quick, like, he basically just gave us card counts. So units, upgrades, um, command cards, battle cards, etc. And there's some interesting little nuggets in here. Um, the most common unit, B1 battle droids, because uh, they're being run in you know, five or six in basically every CIS list. Um, CIS is, so let's real quick, let's do remind people of the faction counts so that there's some reference for this. Um, there are 54 Gar players, 51 Rebel players, 46 Imperials, and 41 CIS. So that's actually, you know, out of almost 200 players, that's pretty even spread. With some very, very slight, you know, drops uh, in each of those steps. But yeah, B1's most common, 232 of those. You said there's Uh, how many CIS players? 41? 41. Yeah, so that almost matches up, right, with like six per per army. Like, I think the deficit is caused by the B2s that are present in the list. And some people are on five. Some nutcases run five because they're running like double tank or some crazy skew. Yeah. So there is a, there's also relatedly, there's 13 B2s. So about, you know, if uh, I'm sure there are some that are running more than one B2, but on average, that's a little more than, you know, 25% of CIS lists are running at least one B2, roughly speaking. So they got some representation there. Definitely not the mainstay, uh, which is fine because they're the, you know, they're the elite core unit choice there. Um, speaking of elite core unit choices, the second most common unit, can you guess what it is? Yo, this this is crazy. <laughs> so I, I would like to preface this with this is the only faction where the core unit it released with is not the most prevalent by a significant margin. Um, yeah, it's not even particularly it. close. It's not close. <laughs> yeah, so but, that's not, yeah. That's not, Second most common unit in Invader League is the Phase Two Clone Trooper. <laughs> yep, 100, 166 of those, um, which basically means that on average, each guard player is running four of them. 
Yeah. I mean, they're good. <laughs> they're, they're <real> good. <laughs> um, I mean, I, it's it boggles my mind that like there are more stormtrooper units than short trooper units, but like the. I mean, and they're they're relatively close. There's 74 storms and 66 shores, but like there are 166 phase twos, and like phase ones aren't even like uh, phase ones are 67. Yeah, so there's more than like, twice as many phase twos as phase ones. Yeah, which is just like you know, crazy. Yeah, they're good. Um, I don't know how much hard hitting analysis we have there, except that obviously, uh, you know, well, really, so there's, there's a couple other, let's just talk about Repub- Republic real quick, because there's, there's some commentary here on the Republic meta besides the prevalence of phase twos. There's also, um, uh, 131 copies of offensive push. Obviously those are not all, uh, Republic, but that is the most common training upgrade. And that's that's common in, um, you know, we talked uh, previously about the Rex, quote unquote, Rex star build. People have actually asked what that is. Um, so that's basically like Rex, a bunch of phase twos, uh, arc sniper strike teams, and then, you know, some mix of other stuff, whether that's like a naked phase one or two for token generation or uh, R2s usually in there. Um, but one thing that is also usually in there is at least two phase twos with offensive push for the tank that Clakers turn specifically. So you can move and abuse the range for So your effective range is range five from where you start ish. A little bit shorter than that, but right. the idea. And if you do it turn one with scouting party, then it's, you know, I've heard it described as range six, but basically from your deployment zone, you get the scouting party move with the phase twos. Uh, you get the actual move and then you get, um, you know, range four with the Z six. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you really want to jazz it up, you can, like, take a full unit of arcs and give them up length, so you can have, like, three units that can take that clankers on the same turn. Yeah, if you uh, want to get crazy. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Kingsley's running some variation of that, actually. He's running, like, a double arc, take yeah. that clankers turn. I mean, I, you can literally blow your opponent off the table turn one if things go poorly for that. You catch them out of cover or something, and it's just... Yep. So it's going to go bad for those guys. Let's talk real quick about like the tactical implication of this. I think it's basically like if you're facing a Republic player and you're not yourself a Republic player, you should essentially just hide on turn one. Is that accurate? Um. So I, I sort of disagree with that. And I think it's sort of the coordinated bombardment trap is that like I think you just kind of got to play into it a little bit so that they take the shot like you're gonna have to you're gonna take the shot eventually so sure. i think i think you might as well take it when it's the least damaging to you so and i think that on turn one you can likely set up places where it's almost all heavy cover so you get tactical off scout moves right which means that you get essentially like four free if you're running triple arcs and rocks you get four free aim tokens um, before the game starts, just from your scout moves. So at least if you're eating that on different, like some other turn that's not turn one, they're not gonna they're gonna have four less aim tokens, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean that's that's for sure. Um, the the arcs do kind of figure into that equation, but I sort of feel like they're gonna have those aim tokens. Like yes. Like they want to use them turn one, but I, I don't think it's practical to like hide your entire army uh, from a what is effectively a range six shot from the, your opponent's deployment zone. Like, I don't know. I don't. I don't think that's an actual thing. Like, it, I think it's nice in practice, but like, I mean, how? Like, a picture you trying to hide your army from that, right? Like, you're playing droids. You've got 60 models. Like, it's not like, what, what are you going to do? Like, play Long March and set up in the back of your deployment zone? Like, I, uh, is, is that worth the four aim tokens you're denying them? Yeah, maybe I, not. I don't think so. Here, here's my contribution to this discussion, okay? 
I don't play I don't play Gar or CIS, but I do see some analogs in the pre Clone Wars uh, Empire Rebel dynamic, where it was sort of like, well, I don't know if I can hide from these you know range four Death Troopers with recon intel on turn one, but the good news is at least I have enough bad wounds that it absorbs the damage. Yeah. So I think CIS has a similar dynamic here, right? It's like you can fire support me. And you might kill like three or four droids, but I got, you know, 40 of those guys were, you know, 40 more. So it's like, whatever, man. That's how I feel about it. And especially like, like, I think you just, you just fortify up the units that are likely to take the hits. And I think you just kind of have to soak it, Um, you know, whether that means like taking, you know, um, you know, an instant, like, have your pad mega go quick thinking dodge to you know have two dodge tokens in the tank for whatever you get shot by it or whatever um you know um I I, it's 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 really good let me be clear like i you know um and there's a reason that it's a build around um i think we'll we'll see if it's a problem it may be it very well may be yeah, I mean it's not it's not completely unavoidable. It's also not unbeatable, obviously. And I do think the point there is a good point. It's like, well, if they played it on turn one, and they've done their shot, and then it's like, well, then it's gone. You know, it's done. There's no more threat. Right. So like, I know I don't have to deal with that for the rest of the game, so that and you can just sort of resume normal play. That that's how I feel about it. I'm like, you know, if if you can set it up so that you can mitigate it mostly, and then like, you know. Assuming that you didn't put your snipers in a bad place, like you can start picking apart the guard list, right? Um, yeah, and I and I think that that, you know, I don't know, N- not optimal. Like, but you're gonna have to take the brunt of the clone firepower eventually. You can't mm-hmm. avoid it all game. I mean, the way I deal with it, of course, is just to pick the most spread out deployments possible, and yeah. just put my put my stuff as far away from the blob as possible and like that's no good thing about having a 12 activation high act list is that you have enough spare activations to see where your opponent's gonna sort of like ball up and then you can predict where they'll go and you have the advantage of like last deployment where you can just react do like deploy reactively and then they're like well i guess i have to deal with how the situation fell out now there wasn't anything i could do because my opponent didn't show me where his tauntauns were going until it was too late (laughs) But that's you know that's kind of the province of high act lists. It's not really the, and even so, it's not that great because now you can run eleven activation clones if you really really want to. Um, you I, can do it. You can, but it's really hard to make take that clanker is really offensively sweet in an eleven activation list. I mean, it's that's still taking, but yeah. it's still decent, but it's not it's not a standout as like the arc version, right? No, no. Like I think I think you know full arc trooper squads are what make this nasty you know the sharpshooter plus lethal you've got enough aim tokens to pay for pierce and do all the other things um you know i think that there's a i mean there's a conversation where you can go like (laughs) you know stims on your arc trooper squad and throw overwatch on them too so once they're in a you know the forward position they can just continue wrecking wrecking things but Right, but this yeah, kind of feeds into your earlier point. Sorry, Kyle. This kind of feeds into your earlier point of just you have to use your turn zero tools to try to mitigate it. Yeah, yeah. You, like, like the best thing you can do against that list is push for limited visibility. Like, like one hundred and fifty percent. Like, you just want limb vis all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I think. I think the TLDRs. You just have to be aware that that's the thing. For yeah. starters, um, like taking it in the face with a unit in the open is not an option that should be on the table for you. At a minimum, you want to put your yourself in a <laughs> Just position. Just to be clear, I was not advocating for no, taking it in the face with a unit in the open. No, I, no, I, know. I apologize if that's how it came off. <laughs> no, no, it, it didn't. I just want to. I just want to make that clear because it is like, like if you haven't faced it before, that's something that can happen. Like I've seen that happen. Yeah. Um, no. Totally. So, you know, you at a minimum, you need to be aware of what's possible so that you can mitigate it to the extent that it is possible, such that you at least, you know, maybe you've only got a couple models visible or something, like you're limiting the damage. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's hit some of these other counts real quick. Um, and we'll do, we'll do like a more proper data episode or segment at some point with Bushman. Um, some other things that stood out to me that were interesting, uh, R2D2, 
81. So, so there's 95 Cologne and Republic players combined. So it's like an 80, 85% of lists that he's eligible to be running. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, so what's this? What's the three PO count? Out of curiosity, that is it's a like good question. Something. Uh, it's much lower. Twenty two. Um, Twenty two. Yeah. Okay. So roughly twenty five percent of the DTs are running three PO. I think yep. that that is probably too low. I mean, it three PO does make R two substantially better, and also gives him some more flexibility, right? Because like sometimes. Sometimes you just don't score secret mission. And so having 3PO there to be there, like your calculate bot plus, you know, evaporator guy, um, that's super helpful, right? And gives them that flexibility. Yeah. But, you know, where can you find 15 extra points in a list when bids are, like, getting pretty up there? That's you fair. Know? I just think that the flexibility that you get out of that 15 points is huge. Oh, yeah. And, of course, being able to have heavy cover because now you're a two-miniature unit. And the extra health is just so many good reasons to take 3PO. And of course, calculating to yourself to trigger inconspicuous. Let's not forget that. Yeah. It, the other thing is that, like, there's a big difference between a four health R2 and a six health R2. I know oh, that yeah. on its face, it, like, it doesn't seem like much, but he's like, it, it seems like he's infinitely harder to kill if, at six than four. Like, four is like one shotable most of the time, six is pushing it. Yeah, I mean, you know, doing six wounds even to a unit with a white save is kind of difficult, right? Like, they're probably going to be in cover. Um, they've got a white surge save, right? So it's, they're going to make one-third of those. So, like, to one-shot them, on average, you need to do nine wounds through cover, which there isn't really anything they can do, except, like, a fire-supported something. It's like a um, DT squad at range two or something. You know, right. Like. Um so, you know, and one-shotting R2 is the best way to kill him because he can repair himself. Uh, so, <laughs> twice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, adding, that's why I like the six versus four feels like a huge difference because four is infinitely more doable in one shot than six. And it's important to do it in one shot. So, yeah, I think that's actually the biggest, I mean, calculate odds is great. Um, I, I like taking 3PO and R2 in my Jedi Luke lists for that reason, but I think the biggest reason to take 3PO is that two extra health and the, uh, you know, cohesion heavy cover. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see some other interesting tidbits. The AAT is the most common heavy taken by a lot, uh, 22 of those. And the next most common one is the Sabre and the ATST both tied at seven. Not super shocking. Yeah. It's a good unit. It I'm interested to see how many round robin lists of the AAT. I like. I think that it's legitimately a good unit. Um, yep. It's just a question of like, does the fact that it's so expensive make the rest of your list bad? And I think that that remains to be seen, right? Like, I think the ATST is like sort of legitimately a good unit at this point um, as well. I don't think it's as good as the AAT, but um, it'll be interesting if if the AAT is good enough to make up the difference there. Um. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it, the the struggle there is you have to take a roughly 200 point commander along with your roughly 200 point heavy upgrade or heavy tank. So, um, you know, I, I have seen some good like 10 activation AAT lists. Um, like you can get to 10 activations with Grievous and an AAT. Um, and, you know, there are also some uh, like I think, I think R one is running some kind of crazy like a double AAT situation. Uh, it's doable, but yeah, I mean, thirty six point core units can really uh, yeah carry you the distance as far as activation counts go. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, um, last last tidbit, going back to our previous Grievous versus Dooku debate. Apparently, uh, at least survey says uh, Family Feud that uh, Dooku. Uh, there's 24 Dukus and 19 Grievances. So relatively close. That number is now 20 to 23 because I switched to Grievous. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, Any other quick hits from this list that you guys think is interesting? I wanted to see how many operative Luke's in here, but it doesn't appear that Luke is um, uh, split between commander and operative. Okay, yeah, it's a subtitle. 
um, and based on how Bushman does this this extract. Um, yeah, one, it doesn't look thing, like it's a thing. One thing that's in this list I noticed is there's 33 castings, but only 25 K2s. So they're not being strictly run as a pair, which is interesting. Um, I hadn't... I mean, I've tried to put that in lists, and I haven't really thought of it very highly, but I guess it's working for some folks. Casting as a soloist seems less good somehow. I mean, I don't know. It's pretty decent. That's solo. I mean, yeah. If you're using him as like a sniper, I think it's fine. And I think a lot of people are. If yeah. he's like your fourth sniper, then great, you know? Yeah. And and K2 is an operative slot. Um, I've done right. I've done a fair bit of like, how do I do Jedi Luke and Cassian? And also include R2. And the answer to that question is you cut K2. Yeah, you have to cut so. K2. That's right. Yeah. Same, same if you're doing Sabine, Cassian. You, you want to hear another startling statistic? Not really startling, though. What's that? 100, 148 Rebel Troopers. Less than 40 of them are carrying heavies. <laughs> the, the most, that DLT number should be higher. I mean, the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the most carried DL, the most carried Rebel <laughs> Trooper heavy is the DLT 20A. Well, I will die on my DLT 20A sword. Um, I think that so, number should be higher. But. What's, what, what's sort of interesting about that is that... Um, like, assuming that people are just taking naked rebel troopers as core units, like to fill their core capacity up to three or whatever or four, like they should be like roughly the same amount as how many tauntons. There's only forty tauntons. Only forty. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I mean there is that like uh, rebels are flexing to things that aren't tauntons. Oh, certainly, yeah. Like uh, you can tell the rotary RTs are a popular pick as well. Thirty-four of them. Yep. Our uh, rotaries. Oh, there's actually more ATRTs than Tons, but I guess those some of that those includes be Republic. Republic. Yeah, yeah, some of them are Republic, and I, I know at least one list that has it's running Republic rotaries. But uh, yeah. I'm not sure about the full details on that. Yeah, I think people are kind of bored of Tons. Yeah, I, th- I mean that's kind of been the thing. People don't, people are, aren't a. Uh, they aren't playing them because they're bored, but I mean, I'm not bored. I think they're great. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're, I mean, fanta- they're just a fantastic unit. I mean, they're just great. Well, you're not alone. There are 39 of them, but yeah, uh, I, th- uh, I think this. I think the saddest statistic on this list is there's exactly one X34. That's that's my my sad statistic. Are there any T47s? There are six. Oh wow! Look at that. All right. Yeah. So they, there's some there's some there's some play there. People are yeah. people are thinking they air speeders. You know. Is getting better with the land speeders just dead on arrival, basically. Or at least the people seem to think so. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> should we should we push on to our Cinderella interview? I have yeah, one more stat. Okay. okay. Go for it. There are four hundred and forty three strike teams in Invader League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out oh, to my okay. boy. Well, hold up, hold up, hold up. There are 443 sniper strike teams in Invader League. I didn't look to see if there's any uh, people running mines. I, I sort of doubt it. But yeah, there there's are 443 couple. sniper strike teams in Invader League. So, so more, 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 than, more than two per list. Because there's 192 players. Then yes, yeah. There, the yeah. average is more than two. Two and a half. Okay, last, last, last thing. There's only three copies of Lying in Wait, so I think our propaganda campaign is working. <laughs> oh, right, hold up. How many? How many bosses are in here? I think seven. Oh, that's wrong. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's not wrong. It's people it's are sleeping on boss. Uh, I mean, you know, it's one thing. So there's an important thing to note about Invader League in any tournament is Invader League more so than some other tournaments is kind of a try out new stuff tournament. That's true. Um, and Aiden is the new hotness for Empire, right? Yeah. yeah. I think there's like 30 or something. It's like 70%, I think, are running Aiden. Yeah. Something so like I think that explains it. I mean, I, I would like Bosca's Bosk is great against specifically against Republic still. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, um, yeah, I think you should probably see more Bosk. Like, if this were, you know, if this were Worlds instead of Invader League and people were just straight up playing, like, what they thought was the best thing to win instead of just trying the new the new hotness, you'd see more Bosk, I bet. Right. Empire would be playing Bosk Shores. You know, it wouldn't be a thing. 
Well, you'd see Iden too, but it wouldn't be quite as skewed the way that it is. Right. You'd probably see Pal- you'd probably see more Palpatines as well. There's only four of them. Yep, that's definitely true. Yeah. All right. Well, should we move on to our interview with Mr. Stabcast Tim? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do it. it. And we're back with Cinderella Tim Hannon. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I, for the record, I just want the record to show I did not make that nickname i'm not that self-absorbed i'm self-absorbed but not that bad so that was given to me by someone else and that just got thrown on there who, who's who dubbed it uh who dubbed oh, you? i don't i don't want to throw anyone under the bus but his name uh starts with thrawn, and thrawn <laughs> so. <laughs> so is he trying to like call you a princess like what's going on here well so so here's the thing right so I kept thinking, this is great because as soon as I fall, I can change my name to like Fallen Princess, which sounds a lot, maybe not a lot cooler, but at least a little bit better. And I just haven't fallen yet. I'm like, dang it. Okay, I guess I'm just going to keep up with this. All right, cool. All right, all right. I'm going to be honest. That sounds worse to me. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you might just want to stick with Cinderella at that point. It's going to be the new off, movie um, with uh, Gerard Butler. It's going to be Cinderella Has Fallen. It's, there you <laughs> go, Gerard Butler rescuing Tim Hannon. Um, uh, I'll take it. So you are from Stabcast. Do you want to tell uh, us about that real quick before we dive in? <laughs> um, for better or for worse, we have a podcast that is uh, now four of us. It was three guys, and then Will left, and then I jumped on, and then Will came back on. So. Uh, the great thing with four factions and four hosts is we each cut the cover of faction. So it's pretty good. Um, we're somewhat competitive. Ryan and I tend to get really into it. Uh, Ryan more so than me, but it just kind of depends. Uh, we, we have a good time. We do lots of, I think probably a good like quarter of our show is uh, bat reps and stuff. And then we try and we try and spice it up a little bit and throw some extra content in there when we can, but we've been going since, since Legion dropped. So we've been around for a long time. It's a good time. Pop quiz. What yes. does STAB stand for? <laughs> Sunsphere Tactical Attack Brigade. There we go. All right. Yes. All right. That always sticks out to me. So for, we are you know, based in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we have a Sunsphere from the World's Fair here from the 80s, and that's like our local landmark. So that's why our X-Wing group was the Sunsphere Defense Fleet, and now we are the Sunsphere Tactical Attack Brigade. I've always wondered where that's from. Yes, that's why we have a gigantic gold golf ball in our city, and we just are somehow proud of that because Knoxville. (laughs) (laughs) Obviously, I mean, who wouldn't be? Yeah, exactly. That tells you really all you need to know. Unfortunately, we have not succeeded in our efforts to uh, spray paint it like a Death Star yet, so we're stuck (laughs) with the gold ball. I mean, how how big are we talking? We're talking like Chicago has got like the what do you call it? The uh, it is not tall. (laughs) Let's let's get it is. Oh man, I'm horrible at guesstimating. Probably, oh goodness, probably like twenty stories, something like that. No, that's not be right. Sounds pretty. That's, not the, it, that's pretty it's tall. Not super tall. It's not super tall, but it's it's tall enough that you need an elevator. How about that? Okay, yeah, okay, twenty stories. All right. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm trying to guesstimate. That's, yeah. that's huge. I'm trying to get guesstimate again, and I could be completely off. I'm, I should be looking up like how tall is 20 stories for reference. Um, well, well it's, it's roughly 200 feet. Sure, that helps me. Yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a lot of feet. Um, Can I measure yeah, it with Star Destroyers? <laughs> well, it's Star Destroyers. Yeah, 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 give, give me real happens. measurements here. Come on. <laughs> All right, so let's transition from giant golden balls to Invader League. Um, why why are you called Cinderella? Why did Zach, um, so, slash anonymous nicknamer, give you that? Uh, so I I don't tend to start most competitions with a, a high bar for myself, but especially on TTS, I tend to do my legioning in two ways. In real life, I try. And this has shifted over the years and stuff, but I now tend to try to run uh, a real list or a decent enough list because in my mind, I spent the time to paint it, put it together, get it all here. You know, if we've gone to a tournament, I've brought it with me. I want to play something that's at least somewhat decent. 
on TTS, I tend to run garbage because I can I can play with stuff that doesn't exist yet. I can play with stuff that I don't own yet. So I, I'm a little bit more willy nilly. Uh, so I tend to run jank. And right up until lists were locked in, I was messaging people like, I don't know what to run. I don't know what to do. I had I had like a three death trooper Iden list at one point. That was a nine activation three death trooper Iden. That was something that I was like, I wasn't sure about this. And then I had I got Iden up to I think thirteen activations. And then I was like, no, no, I can't do that. So I went back and forth. So all that to say, I don't tend to have good lists, but I love my bikes and I love my dobacks. So I said, let me try and incorporate that in there. Uh, and so I would say most odds were against me, including my own odds. And game by game, I seem to keep on winning, which is no disrespect to my opponents. They've all been, I think every single one of them has been a really close game and a really good game. Um, also, yeah, it's been solid. So could you, in detail, yeah. provide us with this garbage list you're running? <laughs> this garbage list that evidently isn't that bad, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it is... Now, a, a better podcaster here would have this pulled up so I could be reading it. But <laughs> again, I'm from Stabcast. So off of memory, it's Aiden with uh, Overwatch, Offensive Push, Obviously, her little buddy bot and uh, her repeater. Now, also, of course, she has the loadout. So on the loadout is nothing. Now, you might think, well, you mean your sniper and everything else, right? No, I don't even have the sniper on there. I don't believe in sniper Iden. Sniper Iden is bad. Don't at me. So that's where that's at. It's okay. I think you're right there. <laughs> yeah. Continue. Uh, but <laughs> two uh, short troopers with the T21, of course, and then also with an extra body on there. Two naked mortars to go along with them. Two RTC stormtroopers, because the RTC is the bomb. Two bikes with nothing on them. And a dewback with uh, endurance, because I love endurance on a, a dewback. One time I didn't run them, I ran a double dewback list, and Ben panicked both my dewbacks off the table. Uh, so endurance is key. <laughs> and... Uh, just the T21, the four white die crit two blaster, no uh, comm slot on there because I'm right at 800 points with 10 activations. All right, so let me get this straight. You're four yes. and zero. Oh. Yes. You have a do back in your list and two bikes. And the, the, the bikes are whatever. Bikes are decent. So bikes are. <laughs> explain bike, the, explain listen, the do back to me. You can say bikes are decent. What killed Vader last game? But some bikes. Yeah. And a, a side note here, real quick, a side note is my opponent, uh, Krugar, who was, was a great, absolute gentleman. We were playing and the bikes came around and you were actually casting that game, funny enough. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, and my bikes came around the corner and I thought I heard him say, oh, scary. And I was like, ah, yeah, they're kind of scary. He's like, oh, no, no, I wasn't talking about that. Talking about something else. Or he didn't even say scary. I was like, oh, well, the bikes can be scary. He's like, yeah, kind of, whatever. The next turn, Vader died. So th uh, they could yeah. be scary. Yeah. I mean, you, you murked him with Vader, with those bikes. Yeah. You murked uh, that Vader so quickly. Yes, absolutely. But anyway, I'm sorry. That's a, that was a side story that I did get a little kick out of. Uh, but for the Dubek, so the nice thing with the Dubek is with six health, armor one, red defense saves. Obviously, you don't surge on defense, but still. It tends to hold up decently well. And sometimes I throw it out there. And again, to harken back to the game you cast, you notice that I threw it out there kind of as a sacrifice. Um, but that's okay because it's it's in that weird balance where it's hardy enough that if you don't shoot it, it will rip your face off. But if you shoot it, it's going to probably normally take a few shots to get down. And sometimes, you know, obviously dice are dice and sometimes it dies quick. I think my first game, it died pretty quick. Um, but normally it can put up a decent fight to to hang on long enough to at least be a threat. And if not hold a flank, at least distract a flank. I got to talk to you about holding a flank here because um, I yeah. cast one of your games as well. That's and right. um, I remember that you had a, you had the do back in rapid reinforcements. Oh, and and, and, I, and I, 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 saw you, I saw you put it in the back corner. I was like, okay, well, it's scoring and, you know, you know, maybe it'll stay there, but I had this feeling it was going to get chopped up. That thing like ripped his snipers apart because they just couldn't. 
It like yeah. it like ate a naked trooper and then like it killed yeah. a bunch of snipers. That thing was deadly when it ha- didn't yeah. have really any good opposition. Yeah, it went into the backfield. Like you said, it, it killed that naked squad, which I didn't expect. But he just I got all hits and he got all blanks and they were gone. Um, yeah. And then yeah, it just kept harassing the snipers and everything back there. Is again, they can be really deadly if you don't pay attention to them. And again, they die, they die just like any other unit in this game. They don't surge on defense. Armor one is only armor one. So it's not like they're invincible, but they tend to be strong enough to, for me, earn their points. Now, I do wish they were a little bit cheaper or my maybe semi-hot take. I don't know if you call it a hot take. I think that that T21, maybe get rid of the crit 2 on there and auto-include it for 90 points. You know, I don't think you're wrong. Or or just give it some kind of sidearm. (laughs) Give, give me something to shoot with. It could be a three white die attack or something like that. That's fine. Um, but just if something you, that the naked dewback could have would be nice. If you're out there in, in, in podcast land and you've ever heard of a 40 K, which you probably have, cause you're listening to a tabletop miniatures podcast. Uh, there's <laughs> a, a beast in one of the factions called the Carnifex. And Ooh. so there, there's the phrase called the distraction Carnifex. It's literally a unit that's just there to, to make your enemy pay attention to it. And focus yeah. resources on it, and just divert away from the front line. And I got to ask, like, is that this is is the do back? You know, is the intention behind it similar? Where you're just like, if you, I think maybe you said this already, but I just wanted to confirm it. If you don't yeah. pay attention to it, it's going to just destroy you. Yeah, and that's the thing, and especially with that spur, the pro- part of the problem with facing a do back is you don't know how fast it's going to go because that spur is so multi-dimensional i can i can spur spur especially with endurance right you get you're taking off two suppression every time not counting hostile environment but normally you're taking two suppression off every time it's kind of how do i how do i determine what my enemy is going to do with that and there's just so many options it's so versatile and i'm not saying it's the best unit in the game or anything like that but i do think it's undersold a lot because it is a little expensive no doubt no doubt but i think it played right i think it can be done well yeah i was gonna say like mixed supports are kind of rare right you don't really see that you know everybody's Mm -hmm. like oh i'm gonna take three bikes or even when i was you know building you know theory crafting empire list i'm like well i want to run like vader and two dewbacks because i could put Mm -hmm. new ways to motivate them but i mean is this is something that you've done do you have like a do you have something that you could say about mixed supports or like should people try it what do you think so the biggest enemy in my list is actually the list itself it's back control (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's it, there is no control especially with Aiden in there Aiden's great she's a powerhouse <laughs> but everything else is up for grabs now the good news is with that list other than Aiden it's all core and supports so it, it's not atrocious but it ain't great either no uh, that's definitely the weakness there but Normally with mixed supports, when I do that, I tend to run two E-Webs, but my problem with E-Webs lately, as much as I love them, they're one of my first loves of this game. They're so, so cheap, and they're good at holding points, but uh, that range three kills them. Like that, they need something that can get them up to range four for, or something, some kind of generator or something that it can throw on there, because <laughs> range three, they are just not cutting it. Again, um, they're good at holding points, but... Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, you, you're talking about your your army being kind of order control tight. Um, mm. Aiden is very selfish as far as commanders go with her command yes. cards. Um, right. How how has she played out for you generally? Like, clearly, this is the first major tournament she's been legal for. Mm-hmm. Um, what has your experience been with her? And, you know, would you take her again? Um, she is every bit as broken as you think she is, <laughs> uh, which is good and bad, right? I mean, as a game as a whole, you're like, ah, it might not be great, but those command cards are so, so good. It's such a rare, dis- uh, like mental discussion you have to have with yourself and with your friends when you're, you're talking about list building is normally it's okay. Well, this, this command card is decent, but I don't really want to bring this one, blah, blah, blah all of her command cards are really good. Like even just her three pip, even if you have, and I think again, you commented on this during the stream. I have no special forces. So I, <laughs> yeah, I don't get to do her, that. her cool special forces thing, but a, she still gets to do her cool special forces thing. 
and it still orders three troopers, which when your list is half troopers or mostly troopers, that's great. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's definitely been great. Those two command cards where she can attack with basically no cover where you have uh sharpshooter two on her one pip and then her two pip gives you the blast on there. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. it's that combo. I've used that combo. I think if you went through and watched all my games, I think I've probably used it in order over and over again, which I don't know when, the, when does the show come out tonight, tomorrow? Uh, Tuesday afternoon sometime. Probably. Okay. So hopefully my opponent doesn't listen to this before Wednesday. Cause my last game is <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, like I tend to play one her one pip, her two pip, normally to try and get a one two punch and kill whatever's in my way. Uh, that's kind of what happened with Vader, where I he was in heavy cover, but when you have two command cards in a row that don't give a rip about cover, uh, that's fine. And so I just shot through it. Um, have you I'm been gonna... able to pull off the, uh, the magical incapacitate yet? I have not. Uh, I, I did it in a practice game against Ben, but that was with a different list. The only similarities really were just I didn't and some shores. Other than that, it was a very, very much a different list. So I can't say that I've done it in Invader League yet. Okay. There's a, there's a, as you said this comes out now before single limbs. Are we able to change our lists at all? No, we're stuck. Uh, I think after no, we- your game you can't change it anymore in round robin right okay in round robin now before single elims though you can you, you get a new list for single elims oh you do yep okay yeah so here's the thing I'll, I'll i'll drop this tidbit here you're you get to have the the hot take the 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 vaccine behind the scenes cut here <clears throat> i forgot to bring incapacitate <laughs> that's why you haven't landed a magical one i suppose that's, that's Yep. I submitted the list and it was all done. And I looked at it and went, "Oh no!" And I was so sad. <laughs> well, that card's so good, dude. It is so good. I have no. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I just forgot. I built it and I saw all of Iden's command cards in there. I was like, "All right, good. I'm I'm set." And I forgot that it's it's technically the little droid's command card, not her yep. command card. So I didn't catch it. And it was just oh oh. So- it actually has played out okay because having push in there instead has been helpful if Iden dies. But still, I incapacitate so good. <laughs> it makes me so sad. No, you're supposed to say, look, I, I just I thought push was better, you know, for my order control. And... No, I don't <laughs> see that at all. That's, I think I just made a mistake. <laughs> uh, now, now that you mentioned it, I think I commented on stream. I was like, oh, he must have he must be playing push to give orders to the bikes or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's always it's always interesting. And what's really great is the fear of incapacitate. It's everyone's like, oh, what if he hits me with that? What if he hits yeah. me with that? And I think you, I've had a couple of my opponents now comment. I'm like, oh, man, but you could be playing that incapacitate this turn. I'm like, you're right. I could be potentially. <laughs> you never know. Hypothetically. <laughs> that, is a th- that is a thing that most item lists would do. <laughs> hey, man, bluffing is a part of the game, right? Like, Yeah. That's, that's the <laughs> Inadvertent bluffing. I mean, I've I've seen people do that with Leia and coordinated bombardment. Um, yeah. Especially oh, like, yeah, like I know Lupo did, used to do this with Sabs, where he just wouldn't bring it. He just hides mm-hmm. your snipers all game, and then he never plays it. And he's like, yeah, I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to respect it, right? Because you oh, might yeah. be killed by it. Totally. So yeah. now for single limbs, you can all be asking: Did he bring it? Did he switch his list, or did he leave it? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Well, now the first time you get streamed, though, people are going to know. And then yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, all right. Um, like I said, I really hope my opponent doesn't listen to this until after Wednesday night. It'll be great, but that's okay. It's there great. you go. Uh, so I get, I think you sort of answered my next question already, but yeah. um, did you use your wild card at all? I did not. Okay. Um, I played, <laughs> within the first week, I played three of my, f- my games, of my four games I've played so far. And so I just, just, bear bear rush through all of it and i just didn't even think about wild guarding like i didn't forget to i just i was so i wouldn't say practice with the list but i was so used to running it i was like no i don't want to mess with this um i i do have some tweaks and changes i think i might do for single limbs there's nothing crazy um i really i will say i really like having those extra bodies in the shores because when you lose a shore it doesn't matter i won't say it doesn't matter but it matters a lot less 
Yeah, I mean, Kyle Crosser at L at LVO used extra man shores in his list. Mm -hmm. His had Hunter. Yeah. They were very effective. Yeah, Hunter on them. Or I really like, and again, I keep going back to the stream, but you mentioned it on the stream, Kyle. Uh, I really miss having scopes on there. I love scopes on there, but it is what it is. Or no, I'm sorry. No, the Dash mentioned that. I'm sorry. I got it. I forget who's streaming what. <laughs> You're good. We're all the same. Yeah. You're all good, no, man. Fine. We're in the same. We're in the same yeah. boat. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I do miss having scopes on there, so I might try and finagle some things to try and fit some scopes on there. But with 800 points, I don't really have a whole lot of finagling I can do. I could cut that lizard for starters. How dare you? <laughs> I was, about to, I was about to ask, you know, uh, does, is, is the Dubak, you know, is this just like, you know, is this just a passing fancy or do you think the Dubak, you know, really is a solid, re solid recommend for people? I, I have loved the Dubak since it came out. I, I will admit, I think it's better off with only one and not two, which is really sad because I own two of them. And so I don't know what I'm ever going to do with my second Dubak. <laughs> That's not to say that I won't try to run some double Dubak lists, but, uh, it's just so expensive. Oh, it's so expensive. So I don't think I can justify it. But no, I think the dewback stays. I, I like him. Like you said, it, it's a distraction dewback if nothing else. So you've uh, you've best, jumped in. Sorry, he, go ahead. He can rip up the back line. Uh, totally, totally. Uh, so you've jumped into the the streaming game now with uh, TTS <laughs> Legion. You how, how long yeah. have you had your channel? I, I forget. You've had it for at least a couple seasons now. Yeah, I had it for a couple of years before I really got into the TTS scene and I was just streaming actually see if these funny enough. Uh -huh. um, Whoa. Okay. I know. <laughs> hey, I love see if these, but I was streaming lots of see if these, uh, some divinity with my friends where we were playing divinity too. And, and uh, figuring out who gets to be the God King and, and who gets to kill the God King and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I've been streaming TTS stuff for, Yeah. It's been a couple of years now, I guess. I've what lost your, track of time. What are your feelings on chess clocks for Legion? Oh, oh, you you want to know the real thing? I so, want to know the real thing, yeah. Uh, so Ryan and I actually streamed a all stab cast game just last week. And so I can say this somewhat comfortably because it's against my own people. <laughs> <laughs> We, we we streamed that game from start to finish was about four hours. About four hours and, and 15 minutes, give or take. <clears throat> they got to turn four. We th Something must be done. Like that's, yeah. that's, that's with a timer. <laughs> it's not like there was an untimed. That's with setup with took like an hour and then either, you know, a half an hour or whatever. And then each round took almost an hour. Like, yeah, something must be done. And so I, I hate myself for saying this. I think chess clocks are a good idea. And if you had asked me that probably just a few months ago, I probably would have said no, but the more competitive stuff I play, the more I'm like, this has to, this has to get worked out. Cause it's also really frustrating when you know what you want to do and you're just waiting on your opponent. Um, and it's not to say that, I don't think I've, I would don't think I'd ever call out anyone for slow play that I've ever played. Honestly, I don't think I've ever played a slow player per se, but it does get frustrating. Sometimes it's, it feels like it, even though, you know, it's not intentional, it does feel like it sometimes. And you're just like, Oh man. So I think, I think they're a good idea. And again, I feel dirty for saying that I don't like it. The fun guy part of me that's like, Hey, run three do backs. Who cares? <laughs> three do backs for death troopers. Hey, what's a requirement? Hey, you know, like that, that hurts me to say that I need a chess clock, but I think it's a good idea. Was that, was that an R1H4 impression? What was, what was that? Uh, no, remember you forget, sir. I'm from New York originally. So that, oh, I, do, I do forget. That's a back sir. home. That's a back that's home. Back, accent. That's back home. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure what that says about Riha. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, no, I, I absolutely zero disrespect to Eric. He's, he's fantastic. <laughs> He's really, really fun to, to play. Very good impressions. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, so, um, you mentioned you were casting a game with your Stabcast bros. Um, yes, yes. My understanding is that you're the only Stabcast bro without a loss so far in Invader League. Uh, did um, Ryan lose? This is the information I'm... I've been 
provided. Uh, oh I don't man, know. <laughs> that might be true. I don't know. I don't. I don't stay up to tabs because it normally just makes me upset. So I don't look at those things. But uh. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that might be possible. I know Will lost because I saw it happen. So so Zach is asked. Zero and we had to wait four hours to see it. But what? Ah. <laughs> hey, hey. So Zach- Zach has asked that, um, how excited are you on a scale of one to beating Ryan at your local prime about <laughs> making it into single eliminations? Oh, I don't. Now, Ryan will remind you that I did not beat him at the prime we played in, um, but I still got an invite. So, you know, that's what counts, I guess. Not that invites matter anymore. I do joke around that I think all this virus stuff was partially my fault because I think God looked down, saw me win that. I was like, no, we can't let this happen. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Like, that's that's not allowed. This is atrocious. You've gone too far. Take it so all you away. Start, so you started winning games and God sent the coronavirus to stop yes. that madness. It's, I, I have two prevailing theories. Either Luke Cook started it so he could be the reigning world champion for eternity or God sent it down as a curse for me winning that that invite. Either way. It's just, it is what it is. Either way, Legion's to, at fault, but I'm not going to stop playing. What, what hath Tim wrought? <laughs> right? <laughs> there you go. Um, but uh, it would be fun. I do hope I get to to face uh, Ryan in there, but he's a, he doesn't listen to other podcasts, so it's fine. I can say this. He's a really good player. He is probably the, the bane of my existence. He's the antithesis of how I play, which is why he plays Rebels and I play Empire. Uh, it's, we, we were roommates for a while and it's, it's never stopped being that kind of relationship. So it's, it's a good time. I actually, I really do all jokes is that I re- appreciate having someone like him in our local community because he is tough. He normally kicks my butt. And a lot of times we'll talk, you know, before we play in our local nights, Hey, do you want to play like fun list, like goofy list? Or are you playing like a real list? And most of the time I'll tell him, I want you to hurt me. Like I want you to play me and beat me so I can figure out what I did wrong. And I'm going to get mad. I'm going to get ticked off. I'm going to get mad at myself more than him, but it's also how I learn. So I need, I need to be shown the error of my ways and I have many errors. <laughs> so would you say I have a masochistic side <laughs> in Legion? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Just a little bit. And I, I talk about this a lot on the cast. I don't get mad at my opponents. I don't think I've hardly ever gotten mad at my opponents. I will get furious at myself. I'll get furious at myself and at my dice. I'm like, I can't believe you know, why this is stupid. I can't believe you know better than this. Why did you do that? Why did you move that? You idiot, idiot, idiot. Just, yeah. Stop calling you Cinderella and start calling you Anakin. Yes. <laughs> I, I hate dice. They're coarse and they get everywhere. <laughs> uh. Well, so you are, you are, uh, I think essentially guaranteed a spot now in single elims, right? Based on how yes. the rest of your group is shaken out. Yeah, it, even if I lose this uh, Wednesday match, which actually is against uh, his name's Strutter, I've not ever played him before, but he has a list that I'm genuinely scared of. Like he's a very strong, pretty meta list, and uh, it's it's Iden and Death Troopers and Krennic and all the bells and whistles that go with it. And whew, I'm a little nervous. I don't know. <laughs> he, I, I think he's the one that's going to take me down. But even at four and one, I should still make it in. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm rooting for you. It's, so it looks like it's going to be like Aiden Jank versus Aiden Meta. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how strong my Jank is against actually good, really good Aiden lists. Just just saddle up that dewback and ride it to victory. That's right. The lizard cries of victory. <laughs> so uh, I hear some rumors God. that you're going to be, you know, pirating it up with... Uh, jay and evan this week uh Uh, how valid are they and when is that gonna happen those are are very valid and as far as i know it should be happening what for us is tomorrow Uh, if this is releasing tuesday then tonight tuesday yeah should be Uh, unless you guys change his plans in which case it'll be the next week that's fine (laughs) so you guys are gonna be uh streaming it up on sea of thieves Yes, there. absolutely. Yeah, I love love that game and playing it for a long time. Uh, it it was not perfect at launch, but it is quite good now. I love it. Now, Tim, are you a, are you a grinder or are you a player hunter? Oh, what a good question! It honestly, and this sounds like a cop out answer, but it's the truth. Just depends on my mood. 
<laughs> like there's there's sometimes I jump on that game and I'm like I need to kill someone. I need to find a ship and ruin their day. And then other times I'm like, you know what? But what if we just found like all the pigs and returned them to their rightful owners? What a happy day this is. What so is this just, game? Just depends. <laughs> I, I have yet to play Sea of Thieves, and I'm very confused right now. <laughs> oh well, it's it's a game that varies. It just it is whatever you make of it, and. Sometimes you get to stow away on the enemy ship and you hide out until they take down the fortress and you swim underneath, steal the fortress chest and then escape in a rowboat all the way back to the island and cash it in before they ever catch you. Sometimes you just talk to parrots. It's okay. <laughs> Changes. <laughs> okay. It's pirate's life. That's right. Yeah. Pirate's life. That's right. If you're not drinking, you're not playing. So There you go. Well, you got the, you got the beard for it. <laughs> Yar. <laughs> I did actually a fun fact for that game real quick little tidbit when I first started playing it I learned <laughs> if you talk in open chat if you with your random crew in a pirate accent with authority they will listen to you I've I've convinced foreign parties that like I just jumped in, in a party full of friends and I've convinced them to put their fellow friend in the brig and lock them in the brig down below. <laughs> Just because I talked in a pirate voice. Like, Yar! Lock him up, boys! He's not listening to me! He's not secure in the masthead! Put him in the brig! And then they put him in the brig, and it's great. And then he's listening to me. Like, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I very nearly obeyed your commands. <laughs> See, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, um, good luck in your last round robin in Verde League game and uh, I you. think are you are you the first person to successfully lock down a single elim spot uh I I believe I am but I could be wrong about that but I believe our bracket was really like on point with getting all of our games done not just with me but as a whole so I believe so yes awesome but I could be wrong well congrats man and I hope you're running okay. something equally janky for elim <laughs> Uh, it will probably be very similar. Uh, it may or may not have incapacitate in there this time. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetically. Hypothetically, yeah. We'll keep you on your toes. All right. Thanks, man. Uh, well, yes, that was... thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And you have, you, sorry, you have a, do you want to plug your Twitch channel too, in addition to your podcast? Oh, yeah. Where, where um, so watch? The, the Twitch channel is just, uh, Timitation Irish, which if it's that, if that's hard to figure out how that's spelled, is just imitation with like a T-I in front of it. And then it's just uh, Timitation Irish. So, and that's where you'll see uh, lots of Sea of Thieves, lots of Legion stuff right now in the, in the throes of Invader season. I do give out this warning to everyone that <laughs> follows me when I remember to. I do play more than just Legion and Sea of Thieves, so you might get notifications. So I don't blame you if you mute it, but it is a good good time i try and get guests to come on because i don't like just self-casting so it's always a good time if you see the that's leopard on hat you're in the right place right <laughs> that's right that's exactly right there you go all right well good luck man and uh thank you yeah and that was cinderella tim hannon from stabcast and we thank him for coming on um so we have one final item on here that we're gonna sort of just tease super briefly um it has been alluded to in other posts that uh, uh that scoundrels will be sort of moving on to 2.0 scoundrels if you will evolving uh entering the chrysalis uh becoming a butterfly uh sorry i've been reading too many children's books i um, thought you were gonna take the starcraft <laughs> Wait, i was like is he saying like we're like leveling up to Zerg Kerrigan? Like what's what's happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, that's a little more badass way of looking at it than the caterpillar from the hungry hunger caterpillar, which is what I was thinking of. Um, but, definitely yeah. went a different way. <laughs> yeah. No, we are uh so we have historically been a very competitive focused podcast, including uh, this episode. Um starting basically next week, we're going to you know, we're not going to stop talking about competitive topics, um, but that's going to be more like a, a part of the show rather than the whole show. And we're going to try and broaden our scope a little bit and talk about some other Legion things. Um, so to facilitate that, we're doing a couple things, which we'll talk more in detail about next week. But we're also adding another a fourth co-host, uh, a super surprise 
uh, fourth co-host getting sent in from corporate to smack us into shape. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but sort of. <laughs> kind of. No. Um, no, he's great. And uh, he is definitely someone that you know already. Um, and we'll have him on next week for the foreseeable future. So super excited about that. Um, we may or may not even have a new intro and or a new logo. Uh, so we'll see. It's going to be Scoundrels 2.0. We hope that you enjoy it. Um, and it's been a fun almost two years so far with Scoundrels. Yeah, time flies, man. I, uh, it, yeah, it feels like a lot more and a lot less than that at the same time. I don't know how to really say that otherwise. Like, but um, yeah, it kind of feels like kind of feels like just yesterday. We were like, hey, let's start a podcast. <laughs> Our original conversation with Kyle was like, no, we can't do that. Like, that's crazy. And I was like, dude, it might be fun. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> yeah, here we are. All right. Well, we are the Notorious Scoundrels. Ooh, I'm Kyle. Hang on. Up. Okay. Hold up. Oh, okay. We're... We got some plugs. I'm sorry. Why don't you do the plugs? <laughs> all right. All right. So um, we already talked about it a little bit, but uh, tonight, um, Sea of Thieves stream on the Fifth Trooper Twitch. Is that just the twitch.tv slash the Fifth Trooper? Uh, I think it's just, it's on the YouTube. On the YouTube. Sorry. Yeah, Fifth Trooper be... YouTube youtube um so check that out um jay evan uh and tim hannon i imagine they'll have a bunch of other people on there too but um so that's happening tonight um also please uh david and i have been streaming um a lot of invader league games um you can check us out at uh twitch.tv slash yavin base um or twitch.tv slash dashes tv um so uh, i think um i've been streaming generally on like like tuesdays and fridays uh david i don't i'm not entirely sure what days you normally do i, I we, we kind of share we kind of share a time slot which is great because of multi-twitch yeah and um i think most people watch the vods anyway like live viewership with these games is is you know pretty static yeah, and I think a lot more sure. people watch the VODs. But um, yeah, I stream on Tuesdays and Fridays, generally speaking. Um, but I also sometimes do Thursday, sometimes I do Saturday. I try to let people know in advance when I'm doing it. Um, I think we're both doing something tomorrow. I know mine's on 6 o'clock Eastern. And I don't remember when you you have a game as well, if I recall. I think it's, I think it's later. I think it's like 8 or 9. Okay, yeah. so so maybe maybe if folks want to, you know, if you want a double feature, you can tune into mine and then go over to, to Mike's channel on at Dash's TV. Um, you'll have plenty of Legion tomorrow night. If if you're not already watching Fifth Trooper, there's so many so much good content that's being created by this network, and it's it's all worth watching. I feel. Yeah. Um, and as always, we've got all of our stuff up on the blog. Um, I actually just published an article today about um my Invader League list that I'm probably gonna wild card from shortly, but we'll see. <laughs> So I think that's all the plugs we've got, unless anybody else has anything else. In nope. which case, Kyle, you can go ahead and take us out. All right. Well, we're the Notorious Scoundrels. I'm Kyle. I'm Mike. And I'm David. And we are a butterfly. Fly away, we're, butterfly. We're... Man. Wait, wait, who left this glass slipper here? <laughs> <laughs> You know, we forgot to ask Tim who his fairy godmother was. I mean, probably it's Ryan, just, let's be it's honest. It's gotta be Jay, right? Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, it doesn't have to be Jay because David said something else. So, yeah, maybe <laughs> it is Ryan. I bet maybe. It's Ryan. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, stay fresh, cheese bags. Join us next week for another episode of The Notorious Scoundrels. This has been a Fifth Trooper production.